So, as you recall, so when we talk about the rafter, we're going to go and let me kind of cut this in here and we'll draw that rafter. And there are set points here that we need to know. Okay? So, this cutout right here is called a bird's mouth. It's very important for the rafter. So, from here over to there, that's called the rafter tail. And on this part, usually we also have our soffit there as well to kind of cap off the total of the rafters that we go. We'll talk more about that. Um, notice how I drew this, but generally there's a bevel cut cut into there so that that's fit flush. So, uh, and uh, it's kind of oftentimes considered part of the rafter tail, but we're just going to talk about the overall rafter itself right there like that all right because that's really what the length is that we talked about now when you guys start to do your project we're going to need to kind of determine uh, what the overall run is so here's my box that I'm going to build on and we're going to kind of do this step by step today so I can help you get the better understanding I've started to lay out the top of this with a little bit I'm going to try to model the hip root for you um, as we go uh, but we need to take a measurement so and the same thing with a house we would need to be measuring that now in the case of mine as I look from over so I can sit here and I can place uh, my trusses and my rafters going this way or I can place them going this way. Now, most of the time your uh, rafters or your trusses are going to go across the narrowest uh, width of the house. So that means uh, we're going to place them in this dimension and as I measured this, this measured uh, 11 inches. So, what I'm concerned with then is that overall run here. My overall run. So, if my total distance is 11 inches, what's my overall run to the middle? So, what's half of 11? Sydney? 5.5. So, we're going to use fractions we're talking about fractions and it's not easy to use our tape measures to measure decimals so, so we want to use that so, so that is 5.5 inches now uh, when we would do this in real life we'd have to realize of course we're using two by fours or two by sixes and we've got what part up here what is this called it actually would look like this. The ridge what? So it's a board, yeah, the ridge board. So alright. So does our run actually come to the edge of the ridge board? Or does that split the ridge board? It splits the ridge board in half. So so this five and a half inch dimension actually goes to the center of the ridge board. Mr. Curry. Yes. Uh, how, uh, how thick is the wood? So, um, using? so the wood that we're using will be quarter uh, inch by three quarters. So, so, and we'll talk about the reasons for that here shortly and I'll talk a little bit more about the scale as well. Uh, so, what we would have to do, so, so this is going to be a quarter inch wide, which means if this distance is five and a half, we also need to know what this distance is. So what's that distance? Connor? So what's this? 
this distance here. Five and a half minus half of a quarter leaves us. What's half of a quarter? Remember guys, if you need to know half of a fraction, all you gotta do is double the denominator. So, so, so this is one eighth here. So what's five and a half minus one eighth? This is, this is another reason why I like you guys to use your heads because so you can snap these things off. So, so one point. Well, if we were five and a half minus one quarter, it would be five and one fourth. Yeah. But so this is kind of like five dollars and uh, five and a half dollars minus oh. a quarter gives us five and a quarter. But we not a quarter here. So yeah, David. Uh, I got. So 5.375. All right, you got the 5.375 because you punched it in your calculator. Uh, these are fractions, so I begin. Try to use five and a half minus uh, one eighth. So simple fractions, guys. So how do I change and convert uh, one half into some form with eight in the denominator? Multiply both by four, right? So this is five and four eighths minus one eighth. What's it become? Five and three eighths. All right, so that's the actual number that you'll need to use when you calculate it out. So now, if we're going to say we're running a 712 pitch, so that would typically mean for every uh, seven inches of rise, we have 12 inches of run. So we can kind of convert it onto a smaller scale here with uh, inches. So maybe we say um, instead, maybe for every seven and a half inches, we're going to run 12. Let's, let's try that just so, so seven and a half inches. So if I take seven times three and a half, or seven times a half, that's going to leave me with three and a half inches there, right? So and that would basically give me every three and a half inches I'd be putting and rising that up. So we'll kind of get into that a little bit more as we go, all right? But another way that we can do this right now, so. I know five and three eighths, so I don't necessarily know what this dimension is right here yet. So, what are some clues here that I can use to figure out what this will be and then figure out what this will be if I'm using a 712 pitch? Did we already use trigonometry to calculate out what the angle on a 712 pitch is? Yeah. I used to feel like a triangle. Okay. So, so here we're at five and three eighths. I need to know this, and we know we're using a 712 pitch. And because I know the 712 pitch, I know what theta is, right? So we already calculated theta to be what for the 712 pitch? What was it again, Adam? 30.25. So, and we want the length of this line. So again, uh, which one of our trig formulas can we use? Now we have the angle and we have which side here? The adjacent. So, so if I use cosine of 30.25 equals the opposite side over the adjacent, which is 5 and 3 eighths. So now we apply our geometry, our algebra, so 5 and 3 eighths cosine of 30.25 equals the opposite. Uh, Sydney, what's the length of our opposite side here? 
So somebody with the calculator out. So Carter. So tangent would be, what is tangent? Opposite over hypotenuse, right? You are right. So tangent would be opposite over hypotenuse. So, so I used the wrong formula. So it's actually tangent 30.25 equals the opposite over the adjacent. So, so we got to make sure we're applying the right formula. So it's easy to get mixed up. So 5 and 3 eighths tangent 30.25 equals opposite. Good catch, Adam. So, so now I'm going to have you work both of these so you can see how you can think intuitively if you've got the wrong answer. So what do we get for the opposite side here? Tangent of 30.25. Connor, what do you get? Four point six four. Okay. Four point six four. Now, think about this. So, as you go, if you pick and select the wrong one, you got to stop to think about your answers and do they make sense? So. If we're talking about a 712 pitch, remember we already mentioned a 1212 pitch roof is what degree angle? 45 degrees. So, which would mean that this would be pretty much five and three eighths on a 1212 pitch, and we're getting up there pretty close to that. Was would that really make sense that this would be a 712 pitch? No. So, so as you apply this, if you get the wrong formula, don't just go ahead. You stop to think about the numbers that you're being told and, and if those numbers actually make sense of what's coming out. Okay? I got 3.13 for the height. You got 3.13 using this one. Yep. Okay. 3.13. Which one? Anybody else have that? So, Carter, you got that. Sydney, you got that. Eric, you got that. Yeah, I would say uh, a seven twelve pitch is probably going to be somewhere about half this, not quite half the distance. We could know if it was a six twelve. If it was a six twelve pitch, we could probably be. Uh, we could just divide that in half on a six twelve pitch. Oh, but that 3.13 makes a little bit more sense. So, so stop to think about if your numbers and your answers actually make sense to you. All right, now, remember, uh, in this case, what we are getting here is the overall distance from here to there. So, no, I messed that up, too. Anybody else see the other mistake that I've made here as far as 
what this distance is. Should that five and three eighths come all the way over to the raptor tail? No. Griff, you're seeing it. Where should it actually come to? Yeah, it should actually come here to the edge of my bird's mouth. So, so this distance is actually there to that bird's mouth. So, okay, and as we uh, keep this in mind, so we'll have to calculate those out. And we're going to talk about this and add in uh, some scale images there with that. So as we transfer this up, we're going to always take this height a long distance. So, and then we will have a distance here and we'll add material to there as well. All right. Yeah, Bobby. And also, did you say he, uh, he wanted us to put this in the scale? Like a bigger model? Yeah, we'll talk about that too. So as I walk through this, we'll, we'll get this. So we're getting into some pretty complicated stuff. It's going to be kind of complicated at first to understand what's going on here because of the angles and the math that's involved. Yeah. But then once you learn it, it comes pretty much, it, it'll become easier once we start to lay these out. So, and, okay. And what's going to be the plan with like uh, school to we're not going to have school on uh, Thursday or Wednesday, right? Well, so we'll take each, we'll take one day at a time as okay. it comes, all right? Okay. So let's just concentrate on, on on doing our best and getting as much done here as we go, so, all right? <clears throat> Thanks for recording that.